So that creator, Polly Thur, she takes Polly Pockets and paints them and makes like these little polymer clay Polly Pocket figures to match. And so she'll take like a Polly Pocket compact and make it into like a Lilo and Stitch theme or an Alice in Wonderland theme or something like that. And it's just so beautiful. And what she does with her artwork is so cool and just like absolutely incredible. Um, and I'm not artistic like that. I can't paint. I, I don't have attention to detail like that. And a steady hand is not part of my body. But there is that one that the one Polly Pocket that I got with the broken floor, like the ripped up floor, I was like, if I am going to take that opportunity to ever try to do that and like repaint a Polly Pocket, that would be the one that I would do it with because it's already broken anyway. And it's, I think it's the only broken one in that lot of eight. If I looked at the pictures properly and, you know, understood the quality. I think that's the only one that's like a little broken, but it's not even broken. It's just like the, the paper floor is like ripped back. And so if I like ripped out the floor, sanded it all down, repainted it, I think that that could be really cool. And it would be like a really cool project for me because I've been all about the creativity, the creative, um, painting and rhinestone bedazzling all sorts of like the painting of the rocks and stuff. I have plenty of paints. So I think it would be really cool to practice on that one specific broken Polly Pocket Compact. And of course, if I were to ever do that, I would absolutely give credit where credit is due. I love sharing other creators work. I love sharing things that inspire me and all, all of those things. I've never wanted to gatekeep or to pretend like I invented something that I didn't. So yeah, but I thought that that would be a fun thing to try if I were to get that lot. And if I don't get that lot, that's totally fine. It's not meant for me. I will keep on waiting. I will keep on waiting. No worries there. But yeah, the Polly Pocket that I did get, I'll just show you briefly the outside. This is what the outside looks like. And it is the Bluebird Toys from Swindon, England, uh, Polly Pocket 1989 Wild Zoo. I got it for $8. And if you open it up, this is the inside. So, really excited about that. And listen, like, just so relaxing. I, I love the sounds of, like, the plastic toys and the, the Polly Pockets and things like that, the tippity tapping. I think it's so awesome. So, perfect for a video. And it's nostalgic. There's something so, like, so special about the tingles you get from nostalgic items, I am telling you. Or, like, nostalgic role plays, stuff like that. It's starting to sprinkle a little bit. Sorry, I have dry skin um, right here on my nose as usual. But I filmed a video for my ASMR Patreon this morning, uploaded that. I just wanted to get them one more video this month, just one final little relaxation, relaxation nation kind of video. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> Stupid. Relaxation nation. <sighs> it's like black coffee. It really is. I'm gonna turn on my seat heater. Wyoming welcomes you. I'm driving through Wyoming, Minnesota. <laughs> I am so stoked. I have some stuff to look forward to. So my fiance is looking to buy a truck, a new truck. And the ones that he's been looking at are, whew, sorry, it's cold in here, 
are in Colorado and Arizona and if he is going to go get those trucks that means that we're having a family trip a family road trip and well actually we'll probably fly out there and then drive back of course but that gives me something to look forward to I officially booked a little three night stay um, somewhere else and I booked that with a friend and we're going in the fall so really excited about that yeah I'm so excited to have things to look forward to and things that are you know on my on my list it'll be good Rosie starts school again tomorrow thank god <laughs> I am so happy about that, you guys. I can't even tell you. I'm so happy that she's going to start her um, daycare, Montessori daycare again. She learned so much while she was there. She made friends. Of course, she says now, she's like, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I don't ever want to go to school again. It's like, why? I thought that only like teenagers said that. I didn't know that like little kids said that too, but she yeah she's like bummed that she has to go back but that's okay um she needs it she's good there she's like what if i don't make any friends and i'm like you had friends while you were there and she's like yeah but then sometimes they would want to play with other kids and not just me or she would she said that sometimes they would play with her and then leave her to go play with other kids and I was like, well, Rosie, that's because sometimes people have more than one friend and sometimes you want to have, spend time with one friend and other times you want to spend time with another friend and that's okay. And she's like, yeah, she doesn't know about that. She's like, mm -mm. should be all about me all the time. But yeah, it'll be so good to have her in school again. That frees up five and a half hours a day every single day for me to get work done, to get cleaning done, to lay down and take a nap, to literally do whatever I want, to make candles, to do crafting, to take the dog for a walk. Literally could bring tears to my eyes how excited I am for this. It'll be so good. It's just so expensive. So darn toot and flippin' expensive. It's like as expensive as our rent. <laughs> Not quite, but almost. Almost as expensive as our rent. So. Because it's like a Montessori thing, so it's more woo-woo, you know. Woo-hoo. So what did I bring? I brought my planner. I brought my... A notebook. I brought a book to read because I've been reading that book, Mistakes Were Made or Some Mistakes Were Made. I've been reading that book forever, but I keep taking like month long breaks in between reading it. So I brought it to hopefully finish it so I can start a new book. It's a really good book, and every time I read it, it kind of like emotionally fucks me up. So you know, it's good. It's just, I. I don't know, maybe it's too heavy for me and that's why I keep taking breaks, but I do keep taking extended breaks in between and yeah, it's taken me forever to finish it, but I will finish it maybe tonight, who knows? Might get a hotel, might not. I don't know, what do you guys think I should do? I know I shouldn't, I should just go home, but yeah, it would just be fun. When I have my days of me, my days of me, I tend to really like to milk it as much as I possibly can and really just enjoy the shit out of it. So, that's what I'm gonna do. <sighs> Can't believe tomorrow's May. Can you guys believe that? May. And summer still hasn't started here. <laughs> Where's it at? Springtime hasn't even started here, you guys. It's freezing. I mean, it's not that, okay, it's not that bad. It's 47 today, which is fine. Um, it's just 47 rainy and super, super de duper windy, or windy, sorry. Very windy. 
so it's not ideal weather, that's for sure. But I'm going to an antique store that I'm really excited to walk around in. I found some Polly Pockets there once before. So I have hope that I could find them there again. That's also why I wanted to go to Antiques, Minnesota, because I have found Polly Pockets there. That's actually the first place that I ever found Polly Pockets. And I just had a feeling. I was like, I bet I could find. I bet ya. I bet ya I could find some Polly Pockets there today. And I did. Not dolls, unfortunately. Not clothes. Just the compacts. But that's okay. The compacts are for videos, too. So, And I still have a huge selection, a huge lot of Polly Pockets that I'm still going through video-wise. Like, in videos, I still have to go through like five more videos to get through all of the Polly Pockets that I have yet to unbox and open and do the show and tell video for. Because I got this lot off of Mercari and I think it was an $85 lot of dolls and clothes. And that's kind of what I'm interested in. I'm not interested so much in like the accessories that come with it. So like the like surfboards and um, puppy dogs and horses and cars and uh, beds and whatever else like furniture. I'm not interested in those kinds of things. I'm interested in the Polly's themselves, the dolls, and I'm interested in the clothes and I'm interested in the compacts. So the compacts from the 80s and 90s are what I'm interested in and the dolls specifically I'm interested in the ones from like the early 2000s, 2002, 3, and 4. Those are the dolls that I'm looking for most often. And yeah, that lot was a perfect lot for me. And I've made like three or four videos with it now, but I still have like the entire bag to go through. I did also purchase, they make these like Polly Pocket carrying cases and they have so many different designs, which really surprises me. But I have three of them now. Or do I have two? I may just have two. Yes. I have two of them. And then I just ordered a third one on Mercari as well. I put in an offer for $7. It's $7 plus $7.40 shipping, so I paid like $14.40 for it, which is a really good price. Because typically they sell for like $20 to $25 a piece. Just for the bag. It's like a carrying bag for Polly Pockets and so it has like little loops that you can stick the Polly's in and then the rest of the bag you can fill with like the compacts or the uh, accessories or the car, the clothes, whatever. So that is going to be coming. So then I'll have three Polly Pocket storage bags and then I'm going to take, after I go through the entire lot of Polly Pockets that I have, I'm going to go through and separate. I've been separating them as I go, but into three, three sections. Broken items, so like ripped clothes, broken dolls, things like that, and putting those into one bag. The second one, I am putting in all of the things that I want to keep, that I really like, that I want to keep. Outfits that I haven't had before, outfits that I have had as a child but are in better condition than mine are, that, that kind of thing. Um, and then the third one is full of clothes and dolls that are in good condition, that are play withable and sellable, that I don't want. And I will be selling them in lots. Just like I'm looking for Polly Pocket lots, so many other people are too. They sell like hotcakes. Trust me, I know. <laughs> they sell before I can get to them 95% of the time. But I'm gonna be selling those in lots. 
Then I have some jewelry that I have to finish going through it that I got at a thrift store. or an, I got it at the antique store, actually, Antiques Minnesota. I got it there. And I have to finish going through that vase full of jewelry. And then once I do that, I have tons of jewelry that I was like, oh, I was, I'm just gonna donate it. I was gonna donate it back to local thrift stores. And then I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I, I buy lots of jewelry all the time. They sell for crazy amounts of money to like crafters and antiquers and so many things like that. I'm just gonna sell them in lots. I'm gonna sell them in like two to three pound lots and just put them in a Ziploc bag and send them out. So I'm gonna do that. start bedazzling things and I, I have a freaking great idea if anybody ever takes this idea I'll literally know that it was from me um, because I looked both of these things up and they do not exist and as far as I've seen okay they don't exist bedazzled children's book covers or like children's books but like bedazzling the cover of it uh, so to take like green eggs and ham or something, you get the hardcover book, you bedazzle it. And if it's like a special book in your childhood or you want like that book specifically to be given as a gift to somebody and it's like special, bedazzle the book cover. Oh my God, so good. And then also bedazzling uh, board games like the boxes, the lids of the boxes of board games. So let's say Cards Against Humanity, bedazzle it. Bachelorette parties will eat that up. Oh my God, I'm like, I can't believe that nobody's thought of this. I can't believe nobody's done it. Bedazzling like board games or cribbage boards or anything like that. Like, I don't know how nobody's ever done it. So I'm gonna start doing that because I see a hole in the market for bedazzled things and I'm gonna fill it so I want to get into that as well there are just so many my mind is always working you guys it is always working and twerking and finding ways to make money um, and things to do and creative ways to express myself we're always always watching And I'm very open to doing new things and trying new things. That's the thing. I don't like change. So if it's like changing my life or like uh, my routine or my plans, God forbid, changing my plans, I don't like that. But I do like trying, like changing up my hobbies and trying new things. I think that's like a lot of fun. As long as I'm alone. If you suddenly told me that I was going to start trying yoga classes, I would be like, oh, no, no, I don't try new things. But if it's just me sitting at home alone, hell yeah, I'll try something new. I will try something new. Whatever it is, I will try it. I need to get gas. Like any moment now, I need to get gas. My car is about to be empty. But... Yeah, I've got my little to gozy bag just in case. Just in case. I don't know. I really don't have the feeling that I will be staying here, though. That could be my ignorance. I don't know. But I want to, guys. I really want to. That would make me so happy. Make me so happy. If you made it this far in the video, what should you put in the comment section down below? Put a star. Put a beautiful, bright, shining star in the comment section down below. I would love to see that today. That would make me really happy too. Because I'm shooting for the stars with all these ideas and I think you all, you all should be too. There are so many times that I've heard people say like, oh, I've always wanted to get into whatever it is to that whether it's sewing or like playing the piano or whatever it is like oh I've always wanted to learn how to do that I've always wanted to try that oh I've always wanted to make these but they never have 
It's like, dude, life is so short. Try a million new hobbies. Try a million new things. You got it. Try a side hustle. You know, if there's something, if you're like, I've always wanted to make, um, I don't even know, scrunchies. You, I, you've always wanted to sew and make scrunchies and try to sell them because you're really good at it. You've seen like a lot of cool fabrics and you're like, why don't these exist? Like whatever it is, you want to make cups, you want to bedazzle things, you want to crochet something, whatever it is. And you're like, I've always wanted to try this, but like, I'm, I'm afraid that I'll fail or I'll be embarrassed or whatever. Like my family won't buy anything from me. And so I don't even want to try because like, I'll just embarrass myself and quit. Screw that. Just do it. Try it. Try to make that money. Don't join an MLM. But like, I mean a real side hustle. Try it. Even if you only sell one of them. Even if you only sell one of them, it's not a failure, okay? So, anyway, I have to stop and get gas here, like ASAP, or I'm about to be SOL on the side of the road. So, uh, I will go do that, and I will talk to you guys later. I love you. Bye.